Hate crime is a much bigger problem than we realise. Around 45,000 cases are reported to the police every year. But it's feared the true number could be at least five times that. Well, to try to find out just how widespread it is and who's affected, the University of Leicester is carrying out the UK's largest ever hate crime survey. Sarah Sturdy has been speaking to some of the victims. Hate is nothing new, and it's still around us. We make our voices heard. Hate crime is fueled by prejudice. I was thrived for life, and these guys are tamming with golf clubs simply because of the way I looked. Much of it is hidden. We want to give a voice to the many people who are affected by hate, prejudice, and bigotry on a daily basis. It's thought the number of hate crimes reported to the police is just the tip of the iceberg. So, how widespread is it? And who are those hidden victims? Well, that's what the country's largest hate crime survey is hoping to find out. A self-taught precision engineer, a former lorry driver, a trained gardener, Jess is also the local Avon lady. But she's paid a heavy price for expressing her feminine side. I think because we're different, because we're an easy target. Years ago, it used to be quite the norm to pick on facts, and now it's not, not so PC because there's so many fat people. There were some years jumping up and down on my car. It turned into a full-scale fight and I lost half an eyebrow. A fraction of an inch lower, I'd have probably lost an eye, and it would have put quite an end to my career because at the time I was a heavy goods driver. It's a Saturday night and Jess is off to Leicester. To be different. She runs a well-attended transgender support group. Rarely do they report any verbal or physical abuse. They're all frightened that if they're identified on camera, they'll suffer more victimisation. In the six and a bit years that I've run the group, we've lost seven members to suicide. A lot of it was down to the amount of abuse they got. After my last piece of research, I started receiving death threat letters. Really? Really quite horrifying, actually, signed by a guy called Death Incarnate. A team at the University of Leicester wants to discover the true scale of hate crime. What exactly is hate crime? Hate crimes are acts of hate directed at people because of who they are. It might be their skin colour, their faith, their disability, their sexuality, basically any aspect of their identity that makes them somehow different or unwelcome in the eyes of the perpetrator. We're concerned that many people are affected, but we just don't know about it. If we look just at the official figures, we know that the numbers of hate crimes are around the 45,000 mark. That seems to be consistent year in, year out. Some surveys have it more than five times higher than police recorded figures. So there's that dark figure of hate crime that we just don't know enough about. Go, go! Heavy metal music fans enjoying the Download Festival at Donington Park might not seem like your typical victims, but think again. It was mad, because one second it was just, you know, a bunch of 12-year-olds calling us, you know, some petty names, and then all of a sudden it was 18, 19-year-old blokes, you know, with golf clubs, um, yeah, just attacking us on the street. Callum Fields is a metaller from Leicester. His attackers went unpunished, but hate crimes against metalers and goths can now be recorded by police in a category for alternative subcultures in order to monitor the number of incidents. I found it very confusing because I had money in my pocket, they didn't want to steal anything. Uh, they were just attacking us because we were goths or moshers, as they said. I'm a male head, I like to headbang, and you know, I used to start to get women when my hair was long, so, and simple as that, really. I'm not like everybody else. Hello mate, can I give you a little bit about hate crime Sophie Lancaster Foundation? To increase awareness, Leicestershire police have their own hate crime officer. As a gay man when he's not at work, Darren Goddard says he's come to accept a certain level of verbal abuse, but insists police are taking the crime seriously. It's really important that you do tell the police. We work with partners of all different types to try 
our best to stop this type of abuse happening, whether it's verbal abuse or physical violence. And, and people need to understand that we won't tolerate this type of behaviour. You have a right to be who you are and, and celebrate that. Sylvia Lancaster's daughter, Sophie, was beaten to death because of what she looked like. A boyfriend was lucky to escape with his life after the attack by a group of teenage boys in Lancashire. Two 15-year-olds were sentenced to life for murder. Sophie's mum now campaigns for a better understanding and respect for subcultures. She's worked with both police and schools in Leicestershire. All the time, young people are telling us, oh, we've been bullied, we've been attacked. Do you, and we, you know, obviously, do, and do you report? And they go, oh no, get on the phone or get down to your police station and tell people what's happening. Many hate crime victims are people with disabilities. Offences based on prejudice, including against someone's race or religion, can receive stiffer sentences. I was at a public meeting about a mosque and suddenly I was called a terrorist. I've been in this country for 45 years and I've done a lot of community work. Providing evidence is often a problem. Hadra Kote is 70, lives in Leicester and is a Muslim. Luckily, when she was threatened, the police witnessed the offence. They arrested a 49-year-old man. He was fined £50 for using threatening words. Please, for your safety, please start moving down. After terrorism incidents like the London bombings, Hadra notices abuse against Muslims increases. Well, generally, Leicester is very tolerant. It does change because if uh, women go into town wearing their niqabs or hijab, they, they are, their niqabs and hijabs are pulled. Some people spit on them and things like that. That's why I avoid going into town after an incident like that. It's just not worth the act. No, I, do, I just don't want the confrontation. We're looking to speak to people who've been bullied, harassed, victimised because of their skin colour, because of their... The university's researchers believe, despite Leicester's relatively harmonious reputation, the survey will uncover friction between emerging and established communities. Where we have such diversity, there may well be fault lines, cracks, and we need to really identify those in order to find out how to challenge the problem of hate crime. The Crown Prosecution Service is already providing extra support to help victims face the perpetrators in court, like this offender who pulled a veil from the head of a Muslim woman. He was ordered to carry out 150 hours of community work and pay the victim £1,000 in compensation. The findings of the UK's biggest ever hate crime survey will be published in autumn 2014. So what's the answer? Can hate crimes be prevented? People need to be educated. I think the ignorance is the worst part of it. I don't know how to do that. We need to integrate our, our young people into the society so that we don't have this kind of issues going on in the future. I'm not like everybody else. People sort of have this obsession of judging on aesthetics. You know, that quote, never judge a book by its cover. These people, they just... They just haven't got enough guts to say, I can live my life without taking the piss out of anybody else. If they're that big and hard, they can just walk by without speaking, without doing anything. It makes a difference. <laughs>